Welcome back. In this video we'll look at how to approach painting the character's skin tone by using texture throughout to both blend and build our highlights we'll be able to create an effective and intriguing result we're going to have two general light sources one on the front here and one on the back that way when we turn the model around it's going to look interesting from both sides we use the same colours that we did on the face, so if you haven't seen that video, we started off by taking some Games Workshop Talon Flesh, but you can use any similar flesh colour. Then we added some Chimera Magenta, both to darken it and also warm it up. Again, you don't have to use this paint, any magenta or dark pink will work just fine. And that's going to give us our mid-tone. Then to make a shadow colour we're going to take a bit of it and add in a small amount of Chimera Thalo Blue. We use this for our base colour. For the initial highlight layer we'll use our fleshy pink mid-tone that we just created. And I'll start on the back of the legs. Now they are wider at the top and taper down towards the knees. So what we'll do is mirror that in our highlight by making it wider at the top. Stopping just before the back of the knee as there's a little recess there so you would expect a shadow. We'll do the same on the other side, again making the highlight wider at the top to reflect the shape of the leg. And we'll add a highlight onto the exposed part of the butt and again on the back of the knees. I've mentioned this before but you always want to try and match the shape of your highlight to the shape of the surface that you're working on. That way you'll get a more convincing result and it's going to help you decide how to form your highlights so that you're not just flailing around painting random shapes hoping for the best. Turn the model round and repeat that on the other side. Painting your highlight along the length of the thigh allowing it to taper down towards the knee then adding a little highlight on the knee itself. When you have those in place, apply a second coat to make sure that the colour is solid. To continue, we're going to thin that pinky colour down slightly with a bit of water. Then using that, we'll begin to blend out the highlights with some stippling. Just gently tapping the tip of the brush on and around the edge of the highlights to create a textured fading effect. If you're new to stippling, it's a fairly simple concept, but it affords you a lot of flexibility. The basic idea is that you gently and repeatedly tap the tip of the brush against the surface, moving the brush around the general area, each tap leaving behind a small dot of paint. And by using a consistency that has a certain level of transparency to it, you're able to control the opacity or coverage. Adding more dots in the same area will reduce the transparency of the paint. Thus, you can decide where to make your colours more or less intense simply by how many dots you apply in any given position. This is going to allow you to create a blend by making your dots become more sparse and spread out as you move away from the highlight. When you're doing this, don't apply the dots blindly without thought, but at the same time, don't put too much thought into each individual dot. Instead, focus your attention on the surface that you're working on and let it guide you. Just like a sculptor doesn't focus their attention on every single hammer blow, instead they look at the surface of the rock to guide where to place the chisel. And you should do the same thing with your brush as you're painting. Look at the surface, not the brush. Most of your dots should be placed on the hard line and they should be fairly tightly clustered. Then as you get further away from the line, allow more space to appear between them. You can see that initially harsh line is beginning to fade out. It's really just a case of working your way over the model, blending out each highlight until you're happy with the result. I'll do the same thing on the underside pulling the dots down and around towards the inner part of the thigh. You can also use glazing to help soften this out further, but in keeping with our original ethos of not worrying too much about making things perfect, I'm just going to use stippling throughout 
so that I don't get caught up in a cycle of chasing perfection. Having said that, I do start to make a mistake here, and it's a pretty big one. As I was painting, I really wasn't paying attention to the palette, and I was simply reaching over and taking paint when I needed it. Now, normally that wouldn't be an issue, but unfortunately the, the paint had been sitting for a while, and the highlight started to separate into its original colours, with the magenta gradually rising to the top of the mix. So I ended up with an overly pink ring around the edge of my highlight. Once I realised that was happening and had stopped swearing, I just stirred the paint around a bit to remix it and I continued stippling over the pink area to bring the colour back to where I wanted it. It's not a major disaster as you usually have quite a lot of colour variation on skin, so we don't actually need to totally knock this back. We can treat it as more of a happy accident and just let it form some of that variability for us. If you're using this method, usually the first highlight takes the, the longest to blend out because the edges are going to be a lot bigger than any subsequent layers that you apply. So don't worry too much if you feel it's taking you a while to blur out the edges. It gets progressively faster as you work your way through the layers. If I was going to be painting this to a higher level, I would be going back and forth between glazing and stippling in order to keep the texture subtle and the blend smooth. I might even employ back glazing using the, the darker colour to further smooth things out, glazing it over the transition, pulling it in the other direction towards our base colour. That's the approach that I took for the skin on the witch model that I painted recently, however that can be quite laborious and I'm trying to paint this up fairly quickly so I'm not bothering to do any extra refining steps here. But you might want to check those videos out to see how you can go about tackling a more high level approach. Even with stippling on its own you can still get quite a decent final result. Just applying small dots on and around the edge of the highlight, the goal being to blur out the obvious line between the two colours. It's quite relaxing to do actually, I usually zone out to some music or a podcast and just tap away until I like what I see. A few things to watch out for when you're doing this though, so if your dots are drying as little rings, don't persevere thinking that you'll be able to fix it with more dots. You're either going to be using too thin of a consistency or you'll have too much paint on the brush, usually a combination of both. To fix it, either make your paint slightly thicker or take more paint off the brush by holding it against a paper towel for a few seconds. I can recommend starting off in an area where any mistakes aren't really going to show up then you can apply a few test dots just to see how they're going to look. The other issue you might run into is that your dots go on too opaque. What you're looking for is to have your dots fade out slightly as they dry. That way you'll have much better control over the gradient. An easy fix to that is just to add a bit more water to the paint. A good habit to get into is always testing the paint on your thumbnail. And you're going to do that to check the transparency before you apply it to the model. It will react on your nail the same way as it does on the model. So you'll be able to judge if the paint is going to behave how you want it. And that's pretty solid advice irregardless of what technique that you're using. I'm fairly happy with how that's looking so we'll move on to applying a new layer. We'll create this the same way we did on the face. First taking some white sands and mixing in a small amount of Caribbean blue to give us a really light turquoise. Then we'll use that mixing it into our fleshy pink mid-tone making it lighter. Now you have that, place your colour in the same spots but this time making the highlights about half the size as your previous layer. Alright so I'm going to start on the knees just picking out the top. If you think about the light coming down from above, you would expect the knees to catch some of it as these stick out slightly proud of the leg. 
We'll also paint in a highlight along the length of the leg, again trying to make these a little wider at the top, becoming thinner as we move down the thigh. Don't worry about making the colour solid in a single pass, it's good to apply this over a couple of layers so you get a nice clean finish. Alright so now that we have those highlights in place, we'll start to use our stippling to blend them out. Gently tapping the tip of the brush against the surface, leaving behind little semi-transparent dots. Focusing most of our dots on that obvious hard line at the edge of the highlight. Then reducing the number of dots, allowing them to become more sporadic and spread out the further we move away from that hard line. That way we can build up a gradient. Remember this doesn't have to be perfect. When you're painting a section at a time, I find you tend to get a false idea of how it's actually going to look on the finished model. By viewing it in isolation, you're going to be more focused on the imperfections as you have nothing to compare it to. But once you start filling in the rest of the model, you're going to have a lot more to look at, which usually makes your eyes become a lot more forgiving. Unless you're painting for a competition or as a personal challenge, there's really no point pushing yourself to breaking point, so try to find a happy medium between getting a result that you're happy with while still enjoying what you're doing. For example, that highlight there is starting to look okay. It wouldn't pass for competition standards as it's still a little rough, but remember we're viewing this ultra close up. In real life, you're not going to be looking at it zoomed in with a magnifier, it's going to be more like this so your eyes aren't really going to pick up on it. And it's the same process for the front of the legs. Using stippling to apply lots of little dots on and around the edge of the highlight to blur out or obscure that harsh line. You can make this as refined as you want just by spending more time on it. It's really up to you how much work you want to put into it. Once you're happy with how it's looking, grab your next highlight colour which we'll make by adding a bit more of that light turquoise into the mix, making it lighter. Again, painting this on without trying to blend it out, targeting the same spots, but making them half the size as your previous layer. And I'll start on the back of the legs. Now, they are wider at the top and tapered down towards the knees. So what we'll do is mirror that in our highlight by making it wider at the top. We'll do the same on the other side, again making the highlight wider at the top to reflect the shape of the leg. Alright, so now that we have those highlights in place, we'll start to use our stippling to blend them out. Gently tapping the tip of the brush against the surface, leaving behind little semi-transparent dots. Focusing most of our dots on that obvious hard line at the edge of the highlight. Adding more dots in the same area will reduce the transparency of the paint. Thus, you can decide where to make your colours more or less intense, simply by how many dots you apply. This is going to allow you to create a blend by making your dots become more sparse and spread out as you move away from the highlight. It's really just a case of working your way over the model, blending out each highlight until you're happy with the result. You should be able to see what I meant now by each subsequent layer taking a lot less time to finish. This last highlight takes hardly any time at all to blend out. Just because you have a lot less surface area around the edge to obscure. To finish this off we'll take some of the magenta and thin it down to a glaze consistency with a little water. Then with hardly any of that on the brush, we're going to glaze over the knees to give them a subtle colour change. Knees and elbows are usually more red than the rest of your skin, so it's good to add a little colour in those areas to give them a more realistic feel. Apply this over a few layers until you're happy with the effect. Just make sure to let each layer dry before applying another one. How pink you want to make them is up to you. I prefer a more subtle effect, so I'm happy to stop there because I think it's looking okay. <laughs> Alright troops, so I hope that gives you some more tools for when you're tackling your skin tones. 
Thanks a lot for your support and I'll see you all in the next video. Blur out or obscure that hard line. Obscure, 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 each subsequent layer, not each layer subsequent. What the fuck? How did I make that mistake? <laughs>